Let's talk a little Glover Teixeira here. And so from a personal standpoint, I was so bothered by that contest and I was bothered that he and Anthony Smith wasn't stopped. I felt as though as far as the skills and the rules of the sport, and you're just going out to find out who, who's better on that specific night, I felt as though Glover had proved his point 12 minutes prior to the end of the contest, and it, it bothered me a lot. But let's set that aside, and let's just focus on Glover just for a second here, because the guy deserves a ton of praise, okay? He took a beating from Anthony Smith in the first five minutes. He took a beating in the first eight minutes of the fight, in all fairness. I believe he lost both rounds, but without question, it looked as though he was going to get stopped in the first round. He was able to weather that, and he was able to keep his focus, and he was ready to cartmetalize and come back in the next round. Something that's very hard to do in sports is to put what has already happened behind you and just think about the moment of right now. It is very hard to not think about what already happened. Okay, I'm down a round, and I got to win this round just to get even. I got to win another round just to get ahead, and then we got two more after that. It's very hard to not do that. It's very hard to not think about what's next, but to just live in the moment. It's what every sports psychologist will try to get their athlete to do, regardless of sport. They could be in any game out there, stay in the moment. It's a very real thing. Hard to do. Glover did it. Glover is very seasoned, he's very experienced, and he's in very good shape. Now, I have my experience with Glover, and I'd like to go back to this Glover's in shape business. But when I would go out to ESPN, they're in Bristol, Connecticut. Glover is right up the road. I'm trying to think of the name Waterbury. He's in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's about an hour drive, a little bit less. But Nick Newell hadn't opened his gym yet in Connecticut. The only gym that there was was Glover. And by the way, Glover is the same size as me. So I call up Glover. Hey, can I come train? He says, absolutely. Gives me the address, gives me the time. So I go into his gym and I can't find it. I'm right where the GPS tells me to go, but it's at a storage unit. I mean, they're in storage lockers. I go, Glover, I can't find this place. I, I'm stuck at, uh, you know, such and such storage unit. He goes, no, no, you're here. You're here. I'll come outside and find you. So comes out and finds me. And we go through this door and he's quite literally taking a storage unit, you know, where you'd go store your boxes or park a car, whatever, storage unit. He took two of them, removed a wall, made it a gym. So, I mean, it was totally private. You would never find this thing. You would never be bothered there. You would never think there was a gym there. You get inside, he's got a heating unit. He's got a little cage wall. He's got the mats. He's got the bags. And then he's got some cardio equipment. I mean, this thing was the perfect gym. It was the perfect dream gym. Just enough room. And, you know, when you're in somewhere like Waterbury, Connecticut, even if you're a star like Glover, you still are going to train with who you can train with and you're going to be coached by who you can be coached by. It's not a hotbed for MMA is the point I'm trying to make. It's not a hotbed. And I think Glover ended up there. It had something to do with his wife. Got married and I think she got a job and all of a sudden he's in Waterbury, Connecticut, but he's making it work. Finds himself a space, finds himself equipment, lets people know he's in town. The old expression from Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. Very real thing. So I'm in the room, and Glover and I are for sure the veterans in the room. A lot of young guys, 18 and 19, 20, and guys of all sizes. You know, Glover and I are going rounds out there uh, with guys that are 135 pounds. We're going rounds with guys that are 175 pounds. We're going rounds with guys that are 190 pounds. But we're for sure the, the bigger guys in the room. But there's something very special that you can get with going with guys of other sizes. I've always thought it was a misconception of if you're a heavyweight, work out with heavyweights. If you're a 205 pounder, work out with two five pounders. No, sometimes you want to feel that speed of a smaller guy. Sometimes you want to feel that power of a bigger guy. I am fully convinced that the ultimate workout room, you will have guys you can whip, you will have guys that can push you, and you will have guys that can whip you. But you need all three of them. And a lot of guys will get in the pool of, I only want to go with guys who can whip me. Going in there and taking a beating every day is going to make me better. That's not totally true. If you don't have somebody where you can go out and execute your techniques on, you will learn to lose over time. If you go into practice every day and you lose, you will learn to lose. So you want to have those days where you have success, where you're the hammer and somebody else is the nail, and sometimes it's two hammers, and sometimes you're the nail and they're the hammer. You just want to mix it around a little bit. I thought that Glover's gym had done a great job of that. I had such a great experience at his gym. And he said to me, and he and I didn't really know each other. We just knew each other because of the space. In fact, I didn't even go through Glover. I went through Ed Soros, who contacted me with George, who's Ed's partner. 
George goes to Glover and so th- when I walk in, this is like, hey, Glover, I'm Chael. Yeah, I know who you are. I'm Glover. Okay. And he said to me before I left, he said, hey, Sonnen. He said, you know, I'm, I wanted to appreciate it very much if you went and talked trash about my gym. You know, I know that's your shtick. I know that's something you like to do, but this is my gym. And I, I would not, that would not make me feel very good. I felt terrible when he said it. First off, I would, I would never do that. It's like, no, Glover, I got a code, man. I only talk, I talk trash about guys I'm going to go fight, guys that are helping me train. But secondly, he had a great gym. I love that he took a storage unit. I love that he redid it. I love that it was this old school feel. I love that there wasn't all the saunas and the showers and the folded up towels at the front desk, you know, a little juice bar in the corner. I loved Glover's gym. I will share with you, every gym has a philosophy. And some is, you know, get to the clinch and some is get on top and some is you you master your guard. Every gym has a philosophy. Glover's gym's philosophy is very simple. Work hard. Work hard. Whoever's in there and whatever the exercise is, you go to the hardest of your ability. And once we would get done with the workout, we would then go over and get on conditioning equipment. Glover was really into the, the rows. You know, those row machines, you bend forward at your back and shoulder, and it also gets your heart rate up. And uh, I was on the Aerodyne bike. There was a treadmill in there, and we would rotate. And we would rotate. But everybody's exhausted. This is at the end of the workout. So whatever you can give on those apparatuses, I mean, that's really solidifying. If you held anything back during your rounds, get it all out now. Leave there where you you can barely even walk out the door. You're dragging. You're so tired. That's one of those moments. And that's what we were, me and everybody else in there. Glover's over there giving Chance this little prick. He's doing the rows, which is a very hard machine. If you ever do rows and you do it for speed, if you do the row machine right, I mean, (gasps) it will get your heart rate up. He's over there giving chants and wanted us to chant with him. You know, I love my job. I'm so fortunate. Thank you, Lord. He's doing it. And then we're supposed to do it back and it's his gym. So then we have to do it. It's like, Glover, I'm fighting for air over here, man. I don't know how you're over there singing a song. Great experiences there. Guy worked hard. Guy was focused. And if you go and look at what he did with Anthony, don't forget Anthony Smith is a top choice to go fight for a world championship any night. It's why he was chosen and went and fought for a world championship. So when Glover can go out there and show some positions, but particularly dealing with adversity, I mean, that's where the real fight comes. It's not dealing with the man in front of you or even dealing with the voices in your own head. Can you deal with adversity? Everybody can be good with the punches and the kicks until they're punched and kicked back. Can you deal with that and push forward? If you can, you are a fighter. If you can't, you are an aggressor. There's a big difference in being an aggressor and being a fighter. Glover is a fighter. 